My name is Kathy Chow. I'm a project manager in the engineering group at the Metropolitan Water District. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California is the largest supplier of treated water in the United States, serving 90 million people, covering 5,200 square miles. Approximately half of our supply is from the Colorado River Aqueduct, also known as the CRA. Um, the customer siphon barrel number one is part of the CRA system. This 1935 pipeline was constructed to, to deliver water from the CRA to our raw water delivery system. It is a critical lifeline facility. It crosses several faults, including the Kasselma Fault. Metropolitan initiated replacement of the Kasselma Siphon Barrel Number One project to improve the seismic resilience of our system. My name is Jeremy Mercer. I was the resident inspector in charge of construction on the Colorado River Aqueduct Kasseloma Siphon Barrel replacement for the Metropolitan Water District. The Kasseloma Siphon Barrel is part of the Colorado River Aqueduct, which carries water over 200 miles from Lake Havasu to Lake Matthews in Riverside, California. From Lake Matthews, the water is transported to the F.E. Weymouth water treatment plant, where the water is treated and then put into the distribution system. This project replaces 1,200 feet of 148-inch diameter pipe crossing the Castleman Fault with a combination of steel pipe and a dual barrel of dip. We learned about ERDIP in conferences and case studies. The capability of the Erdip join, capa um, uh, flexibility, was very interesting to us. So we met with Kubota to learn more about the pipe. We also met with another water agency and their consultants on their experience with the design and installation of Erdip. I learned about ERDIP during the initial design phase of the Casaloma siphon barrel replacement. I also got hands-on experience uh, during a pilot program with the installation of a small diameter potable water line at one of our facilities. The ERDIP installation plan was developed by our contractor by using the Kubota installation guidelines and the ERDIP was installed at a rate of approximately three to four joints per day. Kubota provided classroom and hands-on training for the ERDIP installation crews to teach the workers the appropriate installation methods for the ERDIP joint. Kubota representatives were on site full time to witness and approve each joint as it was installed. The reason to use 104 inch diameter pipe is because that, that is the largest urban manufacturer. And in order to preserve our original pipe hydraulic flow capacity, we decided to go with a dual barrel of urban. The project required the replacement of approximately 1,200 linear feet of cast-in-place concrete pipe. To do that, we used a combination of large diameter welded steel pipe and also 179 joints of 104-inch ERDIP. The biggest challenge is to design a dual 104-inch diameter pipe to accommodate a 13 feet horizontal and 3 feet vertical displacement. The estimated fault displacement was estimated to occur within a very short distance. So this concentrated deformation within a few pipeline joints. The reason of the conducting the performance test is because a 104-inch diameter pipe was never tested by Kubota. So the project team wanted to conduct a test to verify the performance characteristic of the pipe, including maximum rotation and moment, to determine the number of pieces of erdip to, uh, that is required. The test result shows the performance exceeded the manufacturer's published data, and we used this information to fine-tune our finite element model. We expect the ERDIP to be able to meet the maximum considered earthquake. The project was custom designed to accommodate a 13 feet horizontal and 3 feet vertical deformation. The critical element is the 6.5 foot collar joint spacing. The initial modeling found that even with the maximum number of pipe joints, the soil is still too stiff to accommodate the large movement. The shorter piece segment with the EPS geofoam 
allows the pipeline to move and accommodate the greater fault displacement. The use of collar join also enhances the earth depth performance. This was the optimum solution to achieve the design criteria while still providing sufficient support for the pipeline. The biggest challenge for construction management was ensuring that all of the ERDIP and the remainder of the pipeline was complete in advance of our scheduled shutdown period. Uh, another challenge that we faced was ensuring that we would have a leak-free system when we placed the new pipeline into service. And to do that, we were able to hydrostatically test each individual ERDIP joint ahead of the tie-in. Uh, to add a level of comfort that the system wouldn't leak when we tied it in. Due to the short segment lengths required by the project design, the team was able to prefabricate and assemble multiple joints above grade in a controlled fabrication area that allowed the entrance installation to be performed faster than expected. This project was important to Metropolitan Water District because we had the responsibility to provide a resilient water source to Southern California. I think this project is important as a whole for the entire Southern California because we want to make sure we have adequate water supply to serve our 19 million customers. Southern California is at risk of major earthquake and this project will increase the resilience of our system so that we can serve our region better.